Leave it. She's queen bee, and she's queen bee because you're not. It's not about the dog, it's about you. Stop treating her like a human. Treat her like a dog that she is. She's reactive to people. She's reactive to dogs. Stressed? We'll get it done. Come this way with me. Now give her to me. I'm gonna take her. You can relax, take a deep breath. When you're handling her, there's a couple things that you can't do, okay? Don't talk to her. Like, just stop talking to her because she's in this room and she's trying to figure out what the hell to do and she doesn't know what to do and she's nervous and you're nervous. But the more you talk to her, the more anxious she's gonna get. So just don't talk to her. It's hard, just bite your tongue. Like, when you think you're gonna talk to her, talk to me instead. Ask me a question if you want. I know it's a nervous, like, reaction. I'm just so paranoid she's gonna hurt someone. I don't want her to bite you. If I can't tackle the situation, then you know, it doesn't help you. So I gotta help her, help you, help you, help her. And that's my job, and this is what I love to do. Okay, come here, Lex. All right, so do you know why this reactivity is happening? She's doing all of this because of you. Like, she's reacting, she's explosive, and she's being aggressive and trying to bite people because of you. And I know that that's weird and maybe hard to hear, but my job is to teach you. There's absolutely no point of me taking a dog, training it, and saying, look what I can do, I'm a train... I should be able to do that, right? If we have a harness on this dog, it would be a liability for obvious reasons. Flat collar, liability. We need to control her. We need to communicate with her more importantly. And we need to teach her that what she's doing is not okay. She is reactive, but she also will bite. And she has bitten, right? She's ripped ears off. So she's not gonna be the type of dog that we're trying to modify necessarily. Although I think her fear can be modified where she's more confident with people like myself. The reason why I know that it's you is because when she's reacting at me and trying to bite me, and then I do this, she wants you. She's queen bee, and she's queen bee because you're not, period. She has an unhealthy relationship with you probably because you've babied her her whole life and she's never been treated like a dog. If we're talking to the dog, if we're squeaking to the dog, hey, look over here, she's a dog. So she doesn't, she doesn't care about any of that. She's literally trying to crawl on your lap to just get away. That's not good. It's different if I'm like, hey, come with me, and they're like, eh. Uh, you know, but she's literally like, I can't, I can't leave mom. It has nothing to do with me personally, right? It has everything to do with, I can't leave you. So it's not like she doesn't want to come to me because she doesn't like me. She just can't leave you because she's obsessed with you. Turn down the love, turn up the leadership. Less talking, more walking through her, working on structure, working on obedience, working on sit means sit, place means place, down means down, leave it means leave it. Obviously she's so reactive that when you do say leave it, she's not going to respond. And we're going to switch up some different tools to see how she responds better because you gotta meet her halfway. Where she's at mentally and how she spikes, when she's reacting and she's spitting saliva all over me to try to bite me to get me away from mom, that's a problem. You can't just say, um, hey, look at this over here. Like some sort of like joker, like that doesn't work like that. Our responsibility, if you love the dog, is to let them know that that's inappropriate because it, it could get her killed. There's so much responsibility and there's so much reliability on your hands to make sure that when she's trying to actively bite somebody, that you shut that down because she never wants to do it again. It's not fair for you to even enable her to let her do that by hanging on to her like this. And I know that you're not doing it on purpose. I'm just giving you the mindset of what we need to work on. Say she's super food motivated, right? Which most dogs in that state of mind, right? You go to war, you're not hungry, right? You're on a roller coaster. You're not sitting there drinking a milkshake. Like, oh, like your, your energy and, and all of the blood and all of the chemicals firing off in your system. She's an animal. She's not like, oh, sorry, she's normally pretty friendly. No, she wants to bite me. So all of the chemicals going off in her head, we can't come over here with a little, you know, thing of chicken and say, how about some chicken? A, you're rewarding her for the behavior. And B, she's in such a state of mind, she's so stimulated that you're just gonna annoy her and make things worse. Get out of here, mom. What are you talking about? I'm trying to kill this guy. You need to be able to say, hey, this is not okay. Not because we wanna be big, bad, and alpha, but because it could kill her at some point. Because she bites the wrong person or she bites enough people, she'll be put down. And it's not about how she feels when you do it because she's making really bad decisions. A kid starts to sprint across oncoming traffic and you grab him by the back of the head and you throw him to the ground, you're a hero. But for some reason, when we correct a dog and cause them discomfort for a second when they're reacting, that's not okay for some people. So really it comes down to making sure we're correcting the dog when they react to ensure that they understand that that's inappropriate behavior and it's not acceptable because you love the dog. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna give her a little temperament test here. So I'm gonna try to get her away peacefully without her reacting, which is difficult for her because she normally wants to say, get the hell out of here, this is my mom. And she's doing that because she's like, she doesn't know what she's doing. You gotta leave. She's being a shepherd. If dogs can detect cancer and high blood pressure, they can detect that you're stressed. She's so stressed 
and she's so reactive. I don't want to physically correct her anymore because I don't want to create conflict between us. I just want her to learn that when she barks and reacts and tries to bite somebody for no apparent reason, it's not okay. So the Dogtra e-collars have a vibrate setting on them, just like your cell phone. Dogs do not like them and it's timed perfect. Feel that? So it's a vibrate, right? So it's, it's similar to your iPhone or your droid or whatever. So it's gonna go when she reacts. Now, normally dogs are pretty sensitive to that. So I'm disrupting the behavior, okay? So when she starts to bark or growl or lunge, because you're having a hard time correcting her. I'm gonna do it and then you're gonna do it when we get better. Correcting an animal takes years of skill and know-how and practice. So when she's reacting, you're not administrating the right correction to get through to her. You're pulling up on her and it's very clunky. It's not about being hard and strong. It's about being like, hey, what are you doing? Snap out of it. So the e-collar is just, hey, push this button. <laughs> just nice and relaxed. Don't get tense. The more tense you are, the more tense she's gonna be. I learned that word working with wolves out in Colorado. If you're a ball of mess, the wolves are gonna be like, I'm out of here. You're, you got too much going on. They read you like a book. <sighs> Relax. I put the owner out side because obviously there's really bad separation anxiety but it's important for me to understand where she's coming from obviously she doesn't she doesn't love me she doesn't like me but she doesn't have a problem with me actually she has a problem with the owner being close to me or me handling the dog around her doing the handoff so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have her come back in and we're going to work on just handing the leash on and off tried the long line to get her to commit to me and she just won't because the separation anxiety is so bad and so unhealthy so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use the 280c to work on the reaction when she hands the leash off to somebody else and when there's another dog around. So we're gonna get another dog out and we're gonna do leash transfers to see how she does because those are the biggest things that she has problems with. I'm gonna hand you some treats and you're gonna hand them to her. And then this is gonna be double work here. So we're gonna be working on her being reactive to me when I reach for you. But we're also gonna be trying to change the perception of me, a stranger, you're by- guy giving her treats. Right. First, I'm gonna start by doing this and just tossing that to you. Good job. Oh. Girl. Good. Now what I want you to do is I want you to hold hold your that hand out. Good. And just out this way. Good. 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 And then out again. Good. Just I'm just going to hold this for a second. Good. So what we're doing is this is called desensitization, it's countering, but I think the biggest thing that you need to work on is your relationship with her and the ability to calm her down when she reacts and tell her that's not okay. See how she's in front of you? Don't ever let her do that. So she's either next to you or yeah, behind she you. She thinks she's protecting you and she doesn't need to do that. Good. That's it? Good sit. Good girl. Lexica. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Come on. Leave it. Leave it. Uh -uh. Sit. Good. So she's still tough on those handoffs. So we're gonna keep working at that. Don't don't give her the treat now. What, what I wanna do is keep working. So get in front of her again. Don't let her get in front of you. Don't don't be tight. Relax. Good. Good. Now that's good. That's good. So nice and relaxed. Good. Good. Good job, Lex. Good. Okay, now you're gonna reach out again. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Pull her back a little bit. Good. Now you step forward when you pull her back. Stop for a second. Relax. Good. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. <laughs> Don't let her push you around. You started over here. <laughs> Don't let her push you around. Just nice and relax. You're in charge, okay? Now we're gonna do some reward-based systems for this. We're gonna keep transferring this leash. If she does good, I'm gonna transfer you food and you're gonna pay her. Good, leave it. See if she'll take that. Do you want it? All right, give her a little break, spin her around. Good, leave it. Good, leave it, Lex. Good. Good, leave it. Good, leave it. Good, Lex, come. <laughs> I want you to just come sit here. Good. Good. And then let's see if she'll take food. Here, I'm gonna, <laughs> now I gotta go right over her. Actually, put go right behind her. Actually, do you have food? Yeah. Try to give her some treats. Oh, good girl. Good girl, Lex, good. Yes, and then just go towards me. Yeah, so t here. When you take this treat, put her head towards me. Get her close to me. <laughs> She's like, I know what you're doing. 
There you go. Good girl. We're brainstorming, okay? I want you to see who she really is, you know? Because she has all this potential. Because this is good for her, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just quickly to yeah. get near someone that can post is unheard of. So go to the water cooler and back. I'm gonna hand you this. Good, now go back and we're gonna do it again. And I'm listening to her breathing. So the way that I'm knowing that she's gonna react or she's building is her breathing. So I'm not looking at her, I'm listening to her that. So if she stops, that's when I know that she's not happy. There, so walk away again. Ah, uh -uh, sit, good. So I'm using obedience, right? Cause she goes, oh, all right, I'll sit. And now we're also desensitizing her reactivity. Oh, just over here, cause she's a little closer to me. Good, okay, walk away, walk away. Now walk up and see if you can give her some food. So what we're doing is you leaving is a big trigger for her. Her anxiety and her stress is creative off the ability to say, do something about it. She's been so out of control for so long. Dogs do not like that, especially German Shepherds. They don't like being in charge. They don't like taking control. They don't like not having control. They don't like not having leadership. The stress of you leaving, she's like, that's my job though. She's like secret service. She's gotta go with you. She has no other choice. So I'm doing two things is I'm desensitizing her obviously to me. This is big for her. This is going to take some time, but you have to work on your ability to control her on the leash using the Herm Springer prong. The e-collar works really good for the reaction. It really diminished that reaction that she had because I was able to time it pretty good. Brr, leave it. She's not gonna come in my lap and she's not gonna lick me, but this is like the first step. Our goal is, isn't to have her be friends with everybody she meets. Our goal is to simply give you the ability and the tools to live a more controlled, happier life with her. So if you have the e-collar or you're training properly, you'll be able to at least handle her. So you should be doing e-collar work with her regardless of what she's reactive to because if she gets out or she busts through the window or whatever, she's a liability. So you really need to make sure that you do some e-collar training with her regardless. But the e-collar correction and the vibrate that we were using on the pager was enough to say, oh, I didn't like that. Well, good, because every time you bark, that's what happens. Cool, we're over it. Keep her away from people, keep doing what you're doing, but it's a long road to get to where you need to be. But at the end of the day, this is what you need to see. Where you're like, is she capable? Is it her? No, it's you. And she is capable. We just have to, you know, fine tune some things, continue to work on her. But within, you know, an hour work or less actually with her, she's here. So if she can do this, where she's like, I'm gonna eat you now. And now we're hanging out here. She's not my buddy but she doesn't have a problem with me. She has a problem with you with me. And that's what we need to change. So the micro is obedience and control and this. The macro and the bigger picture is your relationship with her sucks right now. It's very unhealthy and we gotta change that. Yeah, good girl. So that just tells me that she, you know, she's starting to gain a little trust with me and stuff. You know, no bad dogs, right? She's got these genetics. So it's like your best friend, the dog that you love, is doing everything that you don't like and that you hate and it's potentially gonna take her away from you because of the relationship you have with her. The other things besides handling is don't talk to her. Stop talking to her. Tell her good girl, good sit, good down. Tell her information that she knows. Don't give her information she doesn't. Like if I just switched the language right now to you and you didn't understand it, you wouldn't be sitting there for an hour listening to me. You'd walk away because it's frustrating. Imagine doing that every single day with your dog. Doing little exercises like putting her into a sit before you leave, telling her to break. Structure, it's all it is, like the military. It's really basic things, but you have to do them, unless there's consequences, right? Show up at six, shine your boots, make your bed. So when you walk out the door, put her into a sit and then break her on your terms. Don't open the door and she goes, peace, we're gone, right? Because then she develops, I'm in charge and you're not. That's not good. It's not healthy for her. She's taking too much charge. Right now she does have free reign of the house. I create a smaller one in a bedroom and she does. She's had free reign of the house since she was probably eight year old. Yeah. So create her when I leave now to kind of give her boundaries. Yeah, get the more boundaries and structure you give this dog, the happier she will be and the faster she will progress. Everything that you've done so far has been no boundaries, no limitations, and it's created this. And I'm not saying that you've done it on purpose. I know that you haven't. It's just people don't realize that these are animals and these are dogs. And if you enable them to bounce at the end of a harness for five weeks or pull on a flat collar, or pull on a martingale collar without telling them that's bullshit. You can't do that. Why? Because I care. I want to enjoy my walk with you. I don't want you to bite somebody. I don't want you to get put down. It's not about the dog. It's about you. So basically stop treating her like a human. Stop treating her like a human. Treat her like a dog that she is. You can't train a dog 
thinking like a human. She's an animal. She'll bite, she'll kill something. She ripped your puppy's ear off. People don't do that. Dogs do. She's serious. She'll do it. She'll bite somebody. She'll rip their kneecap off. And it's not about me and her. Working with a dog like this, that's this severe, there's certain German Shepherds that are just reactive. They're pretty friendly, they like people, and they are pretty friendly with dogs. They're reactive on the leash. We teach very basic stuff on just saying, hey, quit the let's move on, right? Good, we're, we're out of there in an hour, we're done. This is a little bit more serious than that, and she means it. But the moral of the story is, is the variable isn't her, it's you. That's why we created the No Bad Dogs movement. I'm not saying that she's gonna turn around and be my best friend, and I'm not saying that you can let her lease, you know, after we're done training. That just means that you need the tools and the skills to be able to handle her responsibly. She's not a human, she's a dog. Treat her like a dog. The more you treat your dog like a human, the more confused and anxious and insecure she's going to be. If she's barking at the end of the leash and she's going crazy and you're over here saying, look at this, look what I got, look over here. She's gonna be like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you have to be assertive. Like, don't talk, do. She does something, you're like, no, right? In daycare, we get a dog that mounts another dog. The other dog turns around with their teeth that can break and crush bone, grabs that dog by the neck and pins it on the ground. Hey, don't, don't you mount me, dude. All day long, it's like that. The most natural thing to do to a dog when they do stuff that you absolutely cannot tolerate is to correct them. That's what they do to each other. So they understand it really quick. They're like, oh, my bad. Since they were puppies, they've done that. Little puppies, you see them, rip, 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 and they react with their little razor teeth. She understands all of that. The moment we take them and we start treating them like a human is the moment they start getting confused. I understand you love her, but if you love her, train her can't just be naive and say, oh, you love me? You won't bark at a person, right? Oh, you're barking at somebody? How about some food? What the hell? No, they're animals. Imagine like that with kids. Like you're like, hey man, I love you. And when you go to school and you try to kick the principal in the face, instead of that, why here's five bucks, go to the snack bar and get a milkshake instead. So then they go and kick the principal and then they go get a milkshake. What the hell's the point of that? You gotta teach them. That's not okay. What are you doing? Please stop, don't. Chicken? No. <laughs>